Happy Women's Month. Yes. Please remember, for as long as you open your legs, you must open your mouth. Otherwise, you'll forever be a nut. You are nut busting orgasm. You'll never know the word orgasm, and you'll not. You'll always be a nut busting hole. And you, it's not a service to have sex, and it's not a baby mission. You must have sex and enjoy it. Also, enjoy it just for fun, you know. So. Own your body, own your narrative, own yourself, and your voice matters. Happy Women's Month, rock. Continue rocking. And you are not a rock. You're not hard. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. I can't do no small talk. No, no small talk. I'm not with the small talk. Can't be with the small talk. Moonchild Sanelli, it is so wonderful to have you here. I'm such an outrageous fan of yours. We're now in the mm. phases era of your brand new album that you uh, dropped on the show. Mm -hmm. Had a single from you also. It's such a delight to have you in South Africa. How are you feeling? Because I have this sense that South Africa has <laughs> no idea what a big deal you are around the world. Yeah. And you are about to jet set off again. You're collaborating with all of these enormous names. You've got fans like Jadena, like Damon Albarn, all of these legends. You're working on this new album with superstars of the world music scene yeah and sometimes i feel like south africa doesn't get it they don't they don't because i don't know they don't get it but i know at least they get it where is your musical home right now how do you feel um i'd say london and australia is insane really it's ridiculous like, my base is in London because my main global team is in London as well. And it's so crazy in my writing. You know about my writing, my my goals and whatever. So it's like um, Joburg, London, then um, Japan, New York vibes. So now it's like, because then I traveled so much after moving to Joburg, then I'm like, okay, cool, South Africa, but I will have a second home, but I'm not stuck in South Africa, you know what I mean? Because I'm like, oh, food is better. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it definitely it is. is. Yeah, no. How terrible is American food? Oh, I don't eat American eggs. It is flavorless. There are two flavors, oh. salt and sugar. Those are the only two flavors of any meal in America. It's Everything horrible. tastes the same. I got horrifically stomach poisoned when I first went yeah. to America because I tried to eat a waffle and I was down for like three days. Don't do it. I've got a friend of mine. Um, she's She stays, she was born in, no, she wasn't born in America, but she stays, grew up there. And she's, she's just like, what I was not I was gonna say organic. She's um, <laughs> vegan. Vegan now. When she's in America, she eats meat when she's out of there. Wow. Because she's just like it's horrible. But I mean, it's like you watch the shows and the ribs are like ostentatious. <laughs> when you get there, they are tasteless. And it's just like ugh. No, I don't, I don't eat American right. breakfast. Basically, I don't touch American breakfast. I'll, I I live in America. I basically live on nachos and um, <laughs> and guacamole. Literally guacamole, coke, nachos, and that's literally that stays in the house. And then I have a microwave. Um, mac and cheese, the <laughs> vegan, the yeah, the vegan, the the gluten free one. Yeah, you're a superstar, but it sounds like university second year in America. <laughs> yeah, no, I can't unless I go to a proper restaurant. But then when you're moving around, it's just so ridiculous. If you do, you go. You have to book in advance. Then you go, you eat, but you have to run and get ready. And then you know, there's no real leisure time. It's just go, 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 go. So you go to great restaurants or you go to Jadena's house and he cooks for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or Diplo's he... house. Well, he doesn't cook. <laughs> they always have just like an array of meals wow. on the, and there's someone who got sent to buy it. Obviously. Wow. But it's just like... Um, it sounds like Diplo's got like an interior designer, but for food. Like he doesn't like, make anything I mean, or put it together, but he's like, <laughs> I want that color and I want that chair and I want that. But yeah. it's just food. Yeah, it's just there. And I mean, like like, like the Anvort the Anvort always have a chef in their home so it's like the soup like I've never enjoyed soup like that like the soup <laughs> is just delicious like okay meet I'll see you when I see yeah, you type thing yeah. you don't feel like something's missing because there's someone who's literally making the stuff everywhere we go Um, so it's just like it's insane it's just insane it's my life sometimes I'll just be sitting there like it's so crazy. You literally used to listen to these people and they're fans of your stuff. Like someone the other day was like, oh, why are you acting so fresh? You're not Beyonce. I was like, don't worry. I'm not Beyonce. Beyonce is a fan of mine too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't break so, my And soul. that's a real gag, you know? know. It's not even like a, it's not a flex. It's a fact. Yeah, I know. Um, so it's like wrong girl. You could say that to another girl, but I... 100%. You've hit a stratosphere. And I, there are many more stratospheres to come. There are always, there's always a larger hill before, yeah. uh, after this hill. But like those performances that you've been doing in France, sold out arenas. Like in Spain, where you were when your new album Phases came out, sold out arenas, performing with the Gorillas, going to awards festivals, performing at Glastonbury, <laughs> going to perform there again. Like, and I mean, 
I don't want to use like small country mentality here as a term, but like we in South Africa, we limit our expectations of what is Definitely. possible. And we say this is what is really possible. And then as soon as South Africans become too big, it's like they are something They're, else now. Absolutely. It's Charlize Theron. And she's like this alien like, thing that yeah. really isn't a part of us anymore. Mad Max came and out, but we were like, you know. It's, she's American now. Trevor Noah, like, even, I'm starting to feel like we don't treat him like a South African anymore. And I want to know it's, how... It's like something we can never reach. So therefore, because we can't reach it, it's unrealistic. It's not ours anymore. Do you think because that's then, happened with you? I definitely know that that happens. It's like, it's it's ridiculous. And to a point where I'm just like, I even know my Grammy speech, you know. And so I'm, I, I'm from South Africa, but I stand for myself yeah. in the world. Because yeah. I'm from South Africa, but I'm, I'm a global artist. Totally. And I bring my, my, I bring my upbringing with me in the world. Like people in Scandinavian countries are singing in Kosa. I mean, otherwise, they don't even know of its existence. Because you're from I Habeha, do that. Right? Yeah. Oh, GQ, baby, GQ. I actually wanted to ask you, because we had a long debate about this last year with a colleague of mine who's from uh, the Eastern Cape. What yeah. do you call people from Kabecha now? Because she said, is it the Kababes? Are the from it, it, sounds very, it sounds very Kosa, <laughs> very peaky Kosa. So it's definitely the Kobechs. Exactly. You've come from a relatively not one of the biggest centers in South Africa yeah. and then dominated like Cape Town and Joburg, Pretoria, all the, Durban, all the huge names. And now you've got to a level where I, I'm sure Johannesburg, all respect, feels like a smaller gig for you. Oh, I'm saying it does. <laughs> <laughs> It really does. I think it's coupled with actual love when I'm back home now because I'm exposed to so much. Um, and it, it just brings me back. I guess it's just that humbling part. But the, oh, my God, it's just like the treatment. You've got cuts there. You've got everybody doing everything. And then you come back and you're just like, oh, Ganen, ah, that part. Yeah. Then you have to go back. But it's also very humbling because you get to meet your people right here because at the arenas, people are like further, you know. Yes. Um, even when you jump, you don't have that, you don't. You can't open a circle and that's really like things I love doing. So um, I love coming back home because it's a different, it's a, it's it's the humble beginnings, I guess. Um, it's where I conquered for my bigger mission, which is what I am conquering now. And... It's part of my history. I love it, but it definitely does feel different. It feels so different. Um, but I love it because it's it's my reality. It's where I come from and it's what um, is the authenticity that sells in the world as well. It's something something I always say when I do, because um, I get booked for talks as well globally. Like I think my last one was Saudi Arabia. And it's always about liberation and um, being a global independent artist uh, as an African artist. And so in, the, in my talks, I always talk about how in our country, when you speak English with an accent as a black person, it's 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 a sign of um, intelligence. It's a sign of education. You know, it's a sign of um, privilege. And in the world, though, it doesn't work the same because it's like we can't place you. In fact, what the the wow. the, the, the accent that is. Um, African is mostly the what's laughed at is actually your currency in the world. And big example of that is the Anvurt. They, 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 Africans accent is even thicker in the world. And it's selling our currency, our originality, and it doesn't look, it's not looked down upon in the world. So if people got to understand just that little part as well, that you, you really are your money. You are money. So that's so interesting to me. Because it sounds like there's a very clear expectation overseas of what an African artist is supposed to sound like, look like, sing, mm -hmm. and do. And not to overgeneralize, because there are many exceptions, right? And it's a modern era where things are changing. We've yeah. got black coffee to goldfish to the unfold around the world doing different uh, epic things. But like, I still feel like the international scene is like, do some more Ladysmith Black Mambazo for us, please. Absol yeah, but I feel so, because they're so used to that, and that exists. There's theatre productions that we don't know about that exist in the world that sell Africa. Um, I remember at a time, maybe like my three, probably my third, second year of touring, um, it was in France, and it was in this chilled place, and I'm here in my leotard, everybody's like classy and everything, and I ended up performing on top of the grand piano, and there's a point where I saw a couple that was um, shook because I was from Africa, but I was sexy and I was talking about sex wow. and it was open and liberating and owning the body and I was like hold up DJ um, guys just because I'm from Africa doesn't mean I'm going to talk about the big five mountains and the valleys there's a, there's a high rate of um, th there's a high rate of the need for uh, ARVs in our country because we have a lot of sex and the education part that's another gag but the fact that we have a lot of sex that's what I'm talking about so let me tell you about our sex lives wow. and that was the gag on some 
In fact, I think part of the consume, uh, consumption of the people that do the different things is because they're so used to that expect, that expected narrative of South African performers that when it's something refreshing like your Moonchilds, your Dianvort, it's 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 like we want to eat this up because I'm like literally the African doll in the world. Yeah, yeah. And it's just like refreshing because even what I do wherever I'm at is still new because I am just myself. I think what's amazing is to an extraordinary degree you champion um, sexual empowerment and glorif- uh, glorification of being a woman and being female bodied yeah, and being queer and playing with like conceptions of gender and gender identity and mm-hmm. sexual identity and making the point that like we are not the same and that is glorious yes. and so there needs to be space for all different kinds of differences of, of expression and experimentation but I, I just want to ask one more thing on that mm-hmm. point. What do you think is the international perception of the performance of sexuality by African artists? I get. I think I'm consumed the way I'm consumed everywhere because I am walking sex. Um, and, and there's so many um, black American hip-hop artists that are talking about sex. And there's an understanding. In fact, my so- like when I make the music, it's... I'm very conscious of my international audience. Even when I use my kosa, I use words that are easy on the palate because I'm conscious, but I know I want them to sing along to that. Right. Going from where my man, which is Zulu, and they say, where's my man? Mm. But it still s- sounds the same when we all sing it in unison. So um, I'm very conscious of that. And my thing with it's liberation. I'm pussy politics. And those are the politics I stand for. And that's what I sell out there in the world. That's what is, is people connect to as well. Because there's nothing else I'd rather be. There's nothing else I would be. Because literally my speech, it's like my speech in a song. That's how I write That's how I write the stuff. It's just like how I think, how I see things. And that's why I was saying, with, even with this album, like when I was performing it in Australia, another Crazy audience. <laughs> Australia is insane. Because I've done two Commonwealth Games there before oh, cool. and all that jazz. So we've built that audience as well um, over time. And with with Australia, I remember the messages that were coming in. But one of the ones that stood out was this girl who said, girl, like all the songs, you're like, you go from Half a Demon and then you go to uh, Undumpable. Then you go to Over You. Now I'm like, oh, okay, so I thought I was in Dumbable. So now I'm over them. Okay, cool. So now we're over them, guys. We're over them. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's all those different processes. But she she felt like it was so, she felt good. I was talking to her because um, her ex was right there. And he was a mother yes. And so all those songs made sense to her. And one thing you, I, I know I've, I've, I paid attention to as well with this album was a lot of the times people would connect to my songs, connect to the hook, but not necessarily get the humor because it'd probably be in Kosa. Nice. So now with, and that's, that's from traveling. Traveling and I'm like, okay, this is how I want my audience to engage. I want them to be able to sing the first song from the first time hearing it. Yeah. And so those Kosa palatable things are easy to sing along to, but it's a language they would have never cared about. Um, and then my story, the the main parts are just I'll be like, okay, cool. So the story is in Konglish anyway, but I'm conscious on like, okay, this one I want all the girls to get it. So and then I'll be like that. Um so it's very there's a conscious process also with the writing but also there's an experience that comes with having engagement with your audience so you know like okay cool how do i involve them even more now that's those are the things i think of in studio the subject matter just naturally comes because of just the (laughs) that is (laughs) going on in your life do you know what i mean unless i'm doing a brief for an ad or i'm doing a brief for someone else's song i mean you know what i mean all that jazz so how did you uh personally get to a point of pussy politics uh awareness awakening uh, I guess an extent of liberation, although I know those things are funny, right? Yeah. Because you don't just become liberated and now you're mentally free. It's a journey and there's an up and a down and a mm-hmm. wave and a path. Uh, but how did you get to that point of liberation or at least certainty and embracing of understanding such that then you can make music about it that people love so much? Uh, I mean, I grew up in a house where I was allowed to be myself. Um, I was in front of the camera for six months. I was endorsed by a, a, a store. I was touring the country doing ballroom and Latin dancing. So already I was exposed more than my city. I, I, my mom just put me in those places. So I, being myself was always... No, my no. It was normal. It's the world that makes you uh, that asks you questions like, when did you get the courage to be yourself, or when? And it's like I never had to go through a process because I was always allowed. I went to a Muslim yeah. school and I would be scolded for wearing a vest in summer. My mom would be like, I took you there for English because I can't afford a private school, mm. and you must get that English. But you're still a child. Wear the vest. Here's your shorts on that body. So these things were were my upbringing that 
my first poem that I wrote and called it poetry was Cloud Nine after I lost my virginity. I never went through a process. Right. Um, I wrote about sex and everything else that I was going through. So it was never even a thought. It was never a thought process. In fact, most rejections came from me being myself. Okay. You know what I mean? And I could never be anything else. So when I say 14 years, it comes from the rejections of people saying, what the hell is this? What I, I established my sound in 2009 by then. I started Red Eye in 2007 where it was just pictures and the person I was working with, fortunately, they were a nerd. And so they just like loved music. They did maths and science and they were teaching that, but they loved music. So they were always just like, so when I explained something in my head, he was able to just like, put it into a beat and then I could tell the story. And from then I knew this was my future ghetto funk. This is my sound because I'd come from poetry. I'd come from hip hop. I'd come from jazz. Still talking about sex, like in poetry, there'd be myself, Busiswa and three boys that were just like signature. And were, I wasn't like nobody. And it was like, what the hell was that? Because I'm not the, I hated, I, there's a moment. I hated seeing girls, hearing girls talking about uh, having the narrative of a woman being weak. Yes. It was always being violated. So I remember that moment of like, I didn't grow up under these kind of women. Right. So you could maybe call that a moment. Okay, of a moment of going, f*** this up, notion of, of weak women, I'm strong, women are strong. And so maybe then, because I started with Cloud9, I was already doing that. Um, that's the sex part. But then the liberation part, I think then I, when I saw that, I was like, that's not true for everybody. Yeah. I'm not that woman. I didn't grow up under those kind of women. Those I don't know these women. And I guess maybe that's the moment where I was going to show sure. the strength of women and celebrate sure. it. Sure, sure. Because I remember so being mad at that narrative. Yeah. And what it kind of sounds like when you were talking about that Australian fan earlier who had the ex next to yeah. her is that you were, like the music was empowering her to express some things that she had deep down but couldn't say out loud and then was yeah. able to honestly have that communal moment of like with tens, twenties, thirty thousands of people going, f*** that guy actually, which is great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that is, yeah, I had to, uh, yeah, she's, that was awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> It's so crazy. It's just crazy. And and the engagement with this one is definitely because there's even a better understanding instead of knowing what the summary of the story is, you know, and just singing along. Now there's even a connection. Because I know in America, a lot of them were like, oh, this is our next truth hurts. This is undumpable. Uh, because in a normal in a normal setup, a guy, if you say that, um, someone will go around saying you're a stalker. Oh, that stalker chick. But that time, someone else that you're probably getting married to or you've been with forever, um, you've got an understanding. And and you've never, you've never been that person. So you don't they, that person you're with doesn't know who this person who used to be with you know, knows, mm. and they don't know what they evoke. And so in that album, that's why I'm like, it's okay. Someone at some point called you a stalker. Someone at some point called you this. Someone at some point undermined your stripper your stripper job. Someone at some point did that. But you know what? We all go through phases, and it's fine. Absolutely, and it's so valorize. Uh, I guess um glorifying and uh, celebrating, which is incredibly powerful. And you and you seem to relentlessly. You seem to relentlessly have new things to say. <laughs> and like on these messages of liberation and strength and uh, pride, I think also. Yeah. And what I really like, and I I don't mean this in a disparaging way at all. I think that I grew up in a generation which was starting to realize that all humans are messy and we may as well not pretend that we're not. Yes. I think I think you probably did that too. I know we're, <laughs> we're, we're, we're of a similar generation. Like I grew up with like, you know, the older folks were like, you must be proper and you must be orderly. And this is mm -hmm. how, this is how if you want to get this job, you must look. And this is how if you want to be pretty, you must look. And it's very boxed and regimented. And I don't know if it's social media. I don't know if it's millennial. I don't, don't know if it's Gen Z or a mix of all of them yeah. of like, messy man mm -hmm. and you, not only that you're also messy older people we're all messy yeah. together and honestly letting it all hang out and going to therapy and taking medication if you need to <laughs> and uh going through mess and not trying to be perfect all the time is actually really dope and when you talk about sex i think about the fact that there's this notion uh that exists in the world that you have to be supremely good at sex every single time you must have the largest yeah. you must have the deepest you must be able to just <laughs> you need to be able to pleasure a million people at once site. you need to be site. you need to be everything and you need to be anything for everyone all the time and that's insane that's anybody not, who's, not who has ever had sex knows that sometimes it goes wrong sometimes it's not nice sometimes you cry in the middle sometimes you decide to have a deep and meaningful conversation halfway through a thrust uh -huh. it just is what it is and yep. sometimes it's glorious and allowing yourself to go through those I mean it's the talking about it part I guess because you know the truth. You know, uh, you know it. And that's the thing. I'm just like, um, okay, my first question is, where do you come from? Your parents had sex. Yeah. 
They'd rather talk about the anatomy and biology and not have to deal with the fact that they had sex. And they'll never discuss the favorite positions. They'll never discuss the protection part element. they never discuss having sex with the lights on so you don't get crabs because even if you have a condom, they hop. They'll never discuss that stuff, you know? So now you find yourself hiding things that are that you could have been protected from. Totally. And I think we're also often very internally uh, controlled by how much we're willing to think about our parents having sex. Like, uh, and go- the thing is, you come from that thing. No, of course. But I mean, okay. So go to is the average... like you're picturing it, is it? Well, no. So that's what I'm talking about. Oh. Is that like is that like we limit ourselves. We live in a deeply sexualized world that is that is also weirdly proper and hold back. But like if I was to go to the average person on the street... Actually, I'm going to look at Jai right now. What is your parents' favorite sexual position? Oh, <laughs> What is the one they were in when they, <laughs> when they conceived made me? I tell of you, you, my mommy was in a doggy. Because she you? loved twerking. Oh, now she you loved see. Twerking. I went and my first twerking um, experience was I did traditional dancing. Okay. And it's like traditional to do it. It's sexualized. That's why Makati can twerk in traditional vendor clothes. Right. But I can't because it's 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 um not proper. It's not traditional. Okay. So therefore there's not a banner to put it under that sure. is acceptable. Do you know what I mean? So, um, but we're doing the same thing. Totally. Do you know what I mean? So I did a tradition. I started as a tr- in traditional dancing, but I think even just like in my liberation of just like being allowed to just have a voice, when we had to do this one show, um, they said we're gonna be topless. I was like, not me. Mm. I wasn't even interested in sex. I didn't know sex, but I was just not gonna have old people looking at my chest. I was not comfortable, sure. and I quit. Sure. And I was just like, well, I got the skill. Then from there, well, unfortunately, my mom would organize the gigs. So I'd get Spice Girl lyrics. My friends didn't have access to the internet. Get Spice Girl lyrics. Um, put my own melodies. Maybe that's where my songwriting actually started. Right. And because, yeah, yeah. Because we the had... Spice Girls. Yes. And when I was watching the documentary now, I'm just like, oh, snap. That was definitely liberating. <laughs> because, and the fact that I literally, like, the UK audience is like... My audience, it's yeah. so crazy because then when I have like the na- the list of the artists that I've loved that a lot of people didn't know, Spice Girls, everybody knew. Like okay. for instance, your Paloma Faith. Now I, I find out that um, Sai from the uh, the guitarist from Gorillaz yeah. is friends with Paloma, and I'm like, oh my god, I literally am the only person who knows Paloma Faith. <laughs> and well, I, I know love Paloma like, Faith, I, so it's two. Two now, you know what I mean? Like I'm just like everybody. Every time I have to do a playlist or whatever. It's I always put Paloma and it's just like oh, it's just like yeah that's great and now it's like that's what I'm saying everything so much is so accessible now that someone I'm on tour with is friends with this person I <sighs> it's amazing it's crazy it's so amazing Diplo and all the rest all of these superstar names mm-hmm. yo it's so good it's so good so where did your um on stage persona look come from because you've got a very distinctive look you've got this glorious world iconic hair yeah it's like you're in a, a gorillas. <laughs> story music like video you it, know right? it was like it was like it was written you know what i mean yeah uh, and then you've got this extraordinary full-bodied incredible i mean I, I didn't know that you did latin and ballroom dancing uh, as, mm. as a younger child but it makes so much more sense with how you fully embody the performance with the crowd as you're performing on stage where does it all come from was it along the way mm. or were you fully formed and what goes into an arena stage performance is fundamentally different sure, to a insane. nightclub or like the, what goes into that it's insane it's even scary getting them to clap but you're clapping as you're making them clap like it's insane it's just it's it's insane like the nerves are every day I mean I get nervous all the time when I have to deliver in general Um, but going back to the image I definitely this is the same image that I was getting rejected for so I was red for seven years Um, because from high school I used to start putting hair, food coloring on my hair like to be red and stuff then I was allowed um, so my mom would let me buy so until I could get, get kungu because I'd now find out what's, what actually works and then I'd put that um, that's what, that was in my trick and I remember there was these three girls and they were big girls who were the most stylish things I've ever seen in my life and they had bright red hair and I remember wanting that hair I was like this is the coolest thing I've ever seen yeah yeah um, and I, I got that hair because another, another thing, like my mom would just put me in like, um, different clothes that, like I'd have Peter Pan shoes, but they're from a designer store. She was a fashion person because oh, cool. she did modeling at some point. So I'd be wearing these things. I'm just like, no, no, I'm just wearing this stuff. She'd be like, <laughs> yeah, you, they don't understand style. Wow. So now it's like that expression thing is literally like something that was just like, yay, Deep baked, you yeah. better own this. You, you never dilute yourself. Like you better own being different. You better own being having the access that you have. You better own 
whatever it is that you know and over the years being marked and all that jazz to a point where I was like okay cool I'm going to name my brand Moonchild Kaltwe because they say I'm in a cult I'm satanic <laughs> and all that jazz I was like let me play on the ignorance yeah. so I called my, my brand is Moonchild Kaltwe it's basic, based on the ignorance and um, over the years I remember I used to do fashion shows at the Hilton Hotel with um, two brands they don't pay me because I've also got a whiskey coming out so oh. ah, no free advertising um, <laughs> but these two brands so the one part of it was Urban the other part was Cosmopolitan so it one would be at the club and one would be at so I do the fashion shows that styling people that drink the cocktails from those drinks mm. and um, I remember this range I did there two years later it was 2011 I remember it well because I shaved my head after that time okay. I saw Onana by um, Riri yes. and I was like that stylist knows who the hell I am because <laughs> that's my storyboard of a range I'd done a year prior and so that was that was like those are my clothes and then she was red her reinvention coming back as a red and I was like Someone's watching me. And with that knowledge, I knew no one would believe me. So what I did was I shaved my head and I knew I wasn't going to do it the same way the next time. I was going to coin it. Then when I did this mop, I moved to Joburg, got wool from a friend, did the moon mop, came back. And when I got back, I called my lawyer. I was like, someone's going to copy this. I need to patent it. I need to own it right now. I'm going to be great. Trust me. He said, I believe you, Moon. Let's go. I've never patented hair before, but let's go. Because okay. I knew, if I couldn't chat to anybody about it. I already knew, I understood the magnitude. And my interest in branding started from there. Like, okay, cool. Because I used to always wonder, like, I'd be like, I've already got fresh ideas. How do I sell them? Do you know? And then knowing about copywriting. So I literally learned all these things over time. Like, I definitely can tell you a lot about branding. I yeah, get paid to yeah. talk about it now. Yeah. Um, and it's just over experience and knowing the magnitude was not with anyone that was around me to understand because it'd be like oh I hold Rihanna knows I'm like but it's okay I don't know how to explain it myself but I know what I know because I, I know my work yes I understand and you. so here I am with my <laughs> hair <laughs> it looks amazing, it looks amazing. <laughs> so it's the sound and then it's the look and then it's the and I'm just like <sighs> so it was never a marketing strategy but, but it was me knowing that someone would use it and basically a branding thing yes. that to do with branding altogether but it was never a marketing strategy um with regards to the music i was making it's just been myself so tell me about those moments when you realize that the music has moved further than uh you even knew it was moving because like you've got a very clear strategy you've got very clear business yeah. sense you know how to construct everything but then you are now having part of your next album produced by one of the greatest Grammy producers of all time who is with his girlfriend and they both suggested each <laughs> other your music being like I've got a hot new record to give you and now you're on his boat creating music with him and stuff you couldn't have known that the music was moving to those spaces I couldn't have known the music was moving to those spaces with an intentional mi uh, mission of being a global artist Right. so the intention makes it move to those places sure. however it does that I don't know how it's going to do that but my intention is to be a global artist and that is a part of being that so the intention is that whoever I meet for it to happen as it's happening I don't have that okay I understand you I understand you and trying to be a global artist but also being so deeply embedded in your true expression of self mm -hmm. which you've been doing for the longest time are there moments when you go ah oh, if I did that I'd be huge in Japan I know you are huge in Japan but uh, I, okay fine let's pick a country you're not huge in uh, uh, is there one I don't know. I mean, I go to new countries all the time and I go to the ones I've been to all the time. Okay, let's um, make up a country that doesn't exist. Because Russia, they love me. I, I've seen them now do colorful braids. Wakanda. Wakanda. No, she's massive in Wakanda. Give me a break. Okay. Uh, oh, yes, because I am in Wakanda. Oh, I forgot. Oh, my God. It's a lot. Okay, let's make up a <laughs> Jakarani land. Jakarani land. Okay, uh -huh. so say like you're trying to get big in Jakarani land, right? And you're not big in Jakarani la land yet. And you know at a moment of strategy that you could give them what they want or you could continue to do your own thing. And your own thing would work, but what they want could work a bit bigger. You'd mm -hmm. stick with your own thing. My language in the world is collaboration. Okay. They want me as I am. That's the thing. They don't have what I have. Like, for instance, there's a um, situation happening where I have to write for, I have to write my piano for a Korean band that's coming out next in wow. 2023. And it needs to be like I'm writing for Destiny's Child. Wow. That's the brief. Wow. So they know my thought process is different as a songwriter when I get booked as a songwriter. So I've been fortunate enough where I collaborate. I do do briefs, but um, I do collaborations. That's my biggest, that's my, that's been my biggest language. Even in South Africa, when I wrote 2016, by Feb, from Feb to August, I'll have three hits on radio in South Africa and it's going to be through collaboration. And it all happened in 2017. I didn't know who it was going to be, 
But all of it, I ticked the three boxes of the collaborations happening in South Africa, mainstream, through collaboration. It's literally been my biggest language. It's been my biggest trick. So when you go to Japan, America, France, Belgium, I know is next, England. And I just come from Belgium. Imagine. So when you go to all those different places, I'm sure you are, to a certain degree, put, well, you're pulling everybody who loves exactly what you put out. But are they different kinds of people who come to different gigs? Um, you don't see much. You don't see a lot of people because um, a lot of the times, for instance, in the UK, um, I haven't done the clubs because the clubs that are done a lot by the Mapiano artists. Right. Um, I haven't done them yet because I do pop bookings there. And so they talk about they can't afford me. Oh. So it's, uh, you know what I mean? So it's different. I don't necessarily bump into a lot of Africans at my gigs. Right. I've got a lot of, um, I've got a lot of white people in my gigs. You can, if you, if it's daytime, you can count. Oh, there's a caramel person. Oh. Uh, you ca- there's, they, 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 like you're Russia. Yes. There, it's the most trippiest thing. They look at you as liberation when you come from a place that used to need Donbass for, as a black person. So, but you're the black person there and you're liberation to them as white oppressed. Wow. So it's always like when you know better, you complain better. Wow. In fact, if you complain at all, because you know better. Yes. It's f- everywhere. Wild. And you get to experience this thing because you are what you want to be in the world. Sure. So do you, does your personal life end up quite a lot in your work life intertwined so you can do both? I'm literally dating money now. Okay. <laughs> Don't have to answer to anything. Okay. It just answers. Yeah, I, and family when you go home to Kabecha? What? I run away from home. They watch me on TV. Oh, that's, <laughs> and then what's up now and again? Um, my dad, I saw my dad in Cape Town and I had to drop him my bottle of whiskey because my bottle of whiskey is coming out. Ah, I'm seeing the ads. It's all over my Twitter feed. It tastes so good. Targeted, targeted, targeted. Oh it tastes so good. I'll send you a bottle. So what is left to rise to? Um, the world's my oyster. Anything, everything. Um, my Grammy, obviously, everybody knows about that. I'm going to get my Grammy. I've already got my speech. Um, I've had my speech. It just gets better over time. I mean, really? I better it's shorter. Um, <laughs> yeah, they're not going to uh, play you out. <laughs> yeah, it's everything is so possible. Like, it doesn't. It's 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 not dreams anymore. It's just acquiring what you know is possible. Yeah, it's choosing what you everything want. Everything is so possible. Everything is everything is. Is possible. it still as exciting? F- yeah. Okay. It's super exciting, and the fact that it's so exciting to just be like. Yo, man, your hand reaches far and wide. What the hell? Yeah. You know, and it's just like, this is why my mom never made me cook. She's like, don't burn these hands. <laughs> 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 now they're out here beaming, you know. Yeah. Um, being able to have the power to say what I want um, because of how hard I've worked as an independent, getting all these names as an independent before I got a label that is now a bigger muscle that's making it even easier you know, um, but being able to like, I still knock on doors. I still do my own DMs. A lot of the things happen like that. Like, I still, um, cause my 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 dreams have no ego. Yeah. And so I seek what I want, wow, and I go cool. for it. And whatever else everyone has power to to make it happen, I still also go for it. So they are assisting me in chasing my dream, but I still forever chase my dream because it's a privilege to have the assistance. It's a privilege to have the mic. It's a privilege to have. It's a privilege to be in my position at this point. Absolutely. Are you afraid of anything? Um, being poor, being poor. Is that a fear? No, because I've got control over that. I have to just continue doing what I'm doing. So it's, I don't think it's a fear anymore. I think it's a fear because it's a motivation for me to stay doing what I'm doing. Okay. And when you hold the mic, you're free of those fears. It, nothing exists besides me and my message and the power wow. to just change something somewhere in someone. This has been so great. Thank you. It's been you. awesome. Thank you. I've really enjoyed this. Women's Day. Happy Women's Day. Happy I'd like Women's to Day. All the women. Oh, it's not today. Happy Women's Month. Yes. Please remember, for as long as you open your legs, you must open your mouth. Otherwise, you'll forever be a nut. You're a nut-busting orgasm. You'll never know the word orgasm, and you'll not. You'll always be a nut-busting hole. And you, it's not a service to have sex, and it's not a baby mission. You must have sex and enjoy it. Also, enjoy it just for fun, you know? So... Own your body, own your narrative, own yourself, and your voice matters. Happy Women's Month, rock. Continue rocking. And you are not a rock. You're not hard. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. I can't do no small talk. No, no small talk. I'm not with the small talk. Can't be with the small talk. 